going a cruise up a river close to a world-famous centre of academia. Now, I know what you're thinking. I can only be in one of two places. Yes, but which one? In today's show, I'll be helping a couple downsize to find a retirement home in the country. Although I'm not sure who wears the trousers in this house hunt. Let's go and take a look at the master bedroom because, well... Because he thinks he's the master. <laughs> <laughs> After you. But all things considered, I think we might just achieve house harmony. We like. We like. We like. Very matter of fact. We, we both like. Both like. See that? Both. <laughs> So which one did you pump for? Sorry. Today, I'm in Oxfordshire, and this is the River Cherwell. Now, people have been punting up and down this beautiful stretch of water since Victorian times, but it became most popular in the Edwardian era, where a punter such as myself would be perhaps donning a straw boater and wearing a stripy jacket. Now, clearly, I'm not observing that tradition today, but I am adhering to a strict local rule. And that is, when in Oxford, unlike Cambridge, where they stand on top of the boat and punt from the box end, here, one stands inside the boat. And I've got to say, it gives you a much lower centre of gravity. And it's a delightful way of discovering the local countryside. Oxfordshire is the most rural and least populated of the south-east counties, with over three-quarters of the land devoted to agriculture. The chalkiest garment of the Chiltern Hills runs right through it, stretching all the way from Hertfordshire to Oxfordshire. The county is home to spectacular sights like the ancient sculpture at Uffington, which overlooks the Vale of the White Horse. Oxfordshire has lots of pretty villages. Those in the southeast of the county, like Nettlebed, have houses built from the flint cut straight from the Chilterns. Whilst in the north, many of the traditional buildings feature the distinctive yellow limestone of the Cotswolds. Picturesque rural landscapes like this, twinned with excellent road links into Oxford and London, are two factors that house hunters here in Oxfordshire are prepared to pay a premium for. The average cost of a detached house here in the county is £380,000. That's around 125000 above the national figure. So let's take a look at a selection of properties that are on the market here at the moment. For £375,000, you could buy this charming 16th century cottage in Long Whittenham. It's been renovated to provide a stunning contemporary interior whilst keeping period features like the ingle nook fireplace in the sitting room and the exposed beams in the kitchen and bedrooms. Or there's this handsome stone cottage for £575,000 in Mollington. Exposed truss beams feature in the sitting room and above the fireplace. There's also a large conservatory, whilst the master bedroom boasts an impressive vaulted ceiling. For those of you with bigger budgets, there's this great two-listed four-bedroom barn conversion in Bryce Norton for £675,000. It's been transformed into a luxurious home with a superb modern kitchen, a spacious dining room, contemporary country-style bedrooms and a beautiful landscaped garden. A great selection of properties there. Time to meet today's buyers and find out why they're ready to escape to the country. Stuart and Sharon retired from running their own dry cleaning business six and a half years ago. Their children have flown the nest, so now they want to downsize from their four-bedroom house in Buckinghamshire and head to more peaceful surroundings. During the last few years, it's just it's totally changed. Uh, many young families coming in now, the children. We, we feel we like are. the old couple <laughs> we are old. in their own. Current home's not ideal, it's just got too big, really, isn't it? We don't ever sit in this room. Yeah, we have four bedrooms. Uh, so we only sleep in one. Uh, we've got three bedrooms that... To oh, store my just, clothes. Just store clothes. <laughs> it's not just the quest for more peace that's driving their move. Since their retirement, Stuart and Sharon have been keen to see more of the world. We'd like to downsize to really give us the opportunity to travel a lot more. I think we'd just like to go off and do a bit more. And to have a smaller place that it's yeah. easier to lock up and to, um, to move, um, travel from. We want to move to the country, we really like walking, don't we? You like the golf. As long as it's near a golf club, I. <laughs> so the world is their oyster, but family ties are shaping where they want to move. We'd like to, at Oxfordshire Village, 
uh, properly so we, we're, we're still within distance of uh, all the grandkids, our children, uh, so we can visit everyone. Neighbours are quite important to me, so I'd like to live close to some people. Stuart, I think, would like to I'm live easy. on his own in the middle of a field because he's such easy. a happy son. <laughs> As you can see, these two are not always of the same thinking, especially when they describe what they want from their new home. I think we both have different ideas on the ideal property. I'd like mine to be two bedrooms, two bathrooms, open plan with folding, by folding doors. Yeah, I think you might need three bedrooms or a study, knowing how much clothes you've got. I hate gardening. <laughs> so we'd like a bit smaller a smaller garden. garden and preferably the garage if possible. It could be a modern property modern inside or it could be a character property but modern inside well at least they're sure on their finances ideally our budget for the next property would be 450 to 490 thousand pounds now any move to the countryside doesn't have to be all about the quiet life they both said they want to remain sociable so i don't want to find them anything too isolated but I think as long as I find Stuart something close to his golf club, he'll be fairly happy. But I get the inkling that it's Sharon that wears the trousers. So she's the one I need to please. Wish me luck. Stuart and Sharon have asked us to look in Oxfordshire, where there are plenty of pretty rural villages and heaps of culture. We found three fantastic houses to whet our buyer's appetite. But as usual, I won't be telling them what they're on the market for until they've had a guess first. And as ever, our last property is our mystery house. And we've certainly got something special up our sleeves. So Stuart and Sharon, why do you want to move? Um, basically, my parents are getting very old now and seeing what they've not what they haven't done, they haven't moved, and they're now in a position where they're too old to move. It's just made us think about doing it at a, a time when we can. So this move up to Oxfordshire would make it more commutable. You want to be, what, an hour and a half from your folks? Well, that's right. Yeah, and we can still see the grandchildren and things. We can t go with our coat rather than our suitcases. Now, house-wise, this, you know, this is why we're here. What do you want from the house? What's, what does your ideal house look like, Sharon? Just something we could lock up quite easily so that we could travel a bit more and... Um, Oh, well, that's interesting. So this is a low-maintenance house we're looking at, then? We are. We'd like something with a smaller garden, something we could look up. I mean, we're surrounding this area by period cottages. We're looking for something old or something new? Something newer, really. OK, why is that? Just easier to maintain, and it's, not, it's a bit lighter. They're yeah. usually not so dark, are they? The older properties have got smaller windows. They can be, yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, they look chocolate boxy. They look yes. very nice, but not to live in. Well, chocolate boxy is often a term used to describe a house or indeed a collection of houses in a village. Is that the kind of environment you want to be living within? Yeah, I'd like to be part of a village life. So a bit of community there then? Yep. OK, all right, so yeah. let's talk about the budget then. How much money are you looking to spend on this big move? Well, Sharon said I'd go up to 490,000. 490,000 pounds. OK, good. Hopefully, the first house is fantastic, but if not, I want you to shout out why it's not. I can learn from there. OK? That sounds good. Stuart and Sharon have a budget of 490,000 pounds. They are open to either a new build or a character property as long as it has a contemporary interior. They want two bedrooms, but I think they're going to need more to store all those clothes and shoes of Sharon's. They'd also like a place which they could easily lock up and leave, so a manageable garden is a must. For our first house, we're taking them to the village of Bletchingdon, which is eight and a half miles north of Oxford. Many of Bletchingdon's houses are built of the yellow-hued Cotswold stone. This is a classic rural village with a green and an attractive pub. The house I'm showing them is a delightful period cottage that started life as three small farm workers' houses which have been knocked into one. Now then, property number one is this one right here. You can't see a great deal of it from where we are because the house really, you're accessing it round the back. But I want to get a first impression from you guys straight away. Eh, not bad at all. It's not bad at all. It's a nice village as well, nice area. Excellent. It's lovely. Excellent. Really nice. Okay. 
Any questions so far? No. No, excited. Let's go and have a look. Let's do that then. Follow me. <laughs> well, I'd call that a thumbs up. Let's hope the inside will keep the positives coming. Just a slight step down there. Thank you. Let's come straight to the kitchen first. Oh, that's nice. No, Is really it? nice. Yeah, quite like the kitchen. Yeah, and it's got a range. Yeah. Do you like a range? Um... It's interesting that you're focusing on an old piece of machinery there rather than the house we're well, supposed to be buying. an old piece of machinery. Oh. <laughs> this may be cheeky. So look, I'm glad you like it. Yeah, I like the kitchen. Seriously, I really like the kitchen. Not bad. Not, 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 not bad. bad. Faint praise from Stuart. I, I think it needs a new range. OK. But All right. I like the kitchen very much. I like the oak doors. But she'd change it. She'd change it completely. Would she? She would. Go on then, Sharon, talk me through it. Um, it's a good space, isn't it, for, for a cottage? Yeah. It rip, is good space. Once you ripped it all out and changed it. Yeah. What would you rip out? The lot. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't change the <laughs> She um, would. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't change the cupboards. And I quite like the centre island. And this is big enough for you? Has it got a dining room? It could have. There's two reception rooms, so one could be a dining room. Because it's nice space and cosy as a kitchen, but it's yeah. not big enough for entertainment. We've got a dining room possibly at the far end of the cottage. But let's go and have a look at the living room, see if that's big enough and bright okay. enough. Okay. okay. So then, the living room, tell me what you think, because I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> dark? Now, now. Uh, it's, dark. it's just a bit dark for my taste, I think. Uh, I like things a bit lighter. Could you make this better for yourselves? Or livable for yourselves? Yeah, you certainly could. You could make it a lot lighter. Certainly, I'd lighten up the fireplace, um, lighten up the curtains, and I'd like to see the rest of the house and see how we go from there. So I'm, at the moment, straight away, I'm sensing there's a but. You're saying, yes, I could do this, I could do this, but there's, there's something that you're not giving me at the moment. Would you say that's fair? True. Yeah, true. I think we're keeping an open mind to see the rest of the house. First. OK. All right, well, let's do just that. Follow me. OK. A cool response to this room, but I still think the upstairs might win them over. On the first floor, there are two modestly sized double bedrooms and a sweet little single room, which could work as a wardrobe for all of Sharon's clothes. There's also a fair sized family bathroom right next door to the master bedroom. Come right in, because I'd rather like this bedroom. Let's see what you think. This is a nice size. Isn't it brighter up here, though? It's much lighter, much lighter. It shows what a difference the paint can make, doesn't it? And that's all the difference is. In fact, you've got lighter floor covering mm. and lighter coverings along the walls. This is lovely. See, OK, we're still not getting blown away by this, no. are we? Would you like a bigger bedroom? No, bedroom size is nice, and the, the two windows are nice, the dual aspect's nice. Now, what else did you ask me for on your...? Two toilets. Two toilets? Two toilets. There are two toilets. Now... You happy with two toilets and one bathroom? I like two bathrooms, but one extra toilet would do. Okay, well you've got the you've got the basic minimum. You've got a bathroom and a separate toilet downstairs. Yeah. Wasn't but the bathroom next to this? So you could actually yes. open the doorway there and go in as an ensuite from there, and close it off and make another bedroom. That's a really good idea. See? That's a really good idea. <laughs> so that bathroom next to the family bathroom mm. becomes an ensuite, mm. and then maybe you can make a separate bathroom down here. Mm. Just be a designer, I tell you. Oh, all right. <laughs> Things are looking up, now Sharon can see the possibilities of this house. I'm going to show them another room, which they could convert into that second bathroom. Now, in total, there's four bedrooms in this house. Now, I know you don't need... You need two double rooms, don't you? We do, yeah. So as it stands, this bathroom, I'm thinking, whilst it faces the road, it might be easier to put it here. Now, I only say that because directly below here is a loo. Would you want to do that kind of work to a house like this to make it a three-bed, two-bathroom house? There's possibilities, isn't it? Oh, we wouldn't mind we doing it. We are in love with all the house. Mm. Right. So the big question is whether or not you are in love with the whole house. That's right. OK, well, let's go back outside to the garden. I know we had a quick scoot through it on the way into the house, and then we can talk about the price and also whether or not, you know, this place is for you. OK? OK. Yeah, all right. Good. You lead the way. It. I'm getting the feeling that they're still a bit lukewarm about this house. Let's see if the price will sway them. Well, 
the sun's come back out. Nice and bright. Well, this is a south-facing garden. And you said you didn't want a massive one, didn't you? A garden's a lovely size, just right for going away, leaving. Okay. Just nice. Good. Now here, when you look back at the cottage, what's your general overall impression? You're not jumping up and down. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't make me that excited. No. And we'd have to spend quite a bit of money on it to put our touch and feel on it, because we certainly want to change some of it. So look, having looked around the property market for the past, well, nearly a year, how would you place this price-wise? I probably think in today's market it's about 450,000. Stuart? Um, I think about 435. Not bad guesses. This is on the market for offers around 449,950. Oh. So good guess. <laughs> well, okay, this is your chance to go back into the house without me and have a good look around everywhere that you've seen so far. Also, take a peek at the downstairs living room. But even if it isn't for you, I think it's a great opportunity for you guys to see what your money gets you at the moment, OK? okay. And I'll catch you in, what, 10, 15 minutes or so? OK, okay. okay. Right. thank you. Thank you. Bit. So, for just under £450,000, this characterful 18th century cottage has a beautifully modernised kitchen and breakfast room, complete with the country essentials of beams and a range. There are two reception rooms, one with an open fire, three double bedrooms and a single room. There's also an enclosed south-facing rear garden. Needs a bit more lighting, a bit more different colour. Not a lot of flow within the house, not a lot of continuity, and uh, we'll need quite a bit of money spending on it. I think the house is a lovely size. I think downstairs is probably a bit dark for me. Upstairs seems a lot lighter an area. Um, certainly bits we could do to it. I just think perhaps we'd have to spend too much money on it to get it the way we liked it. All done? All done, yeah. Good. Well, onward and upward. Follow me. OK. When Stuart and Sharon moved to Oxfordshire, their county town will be Oxford. Earlier in the week, we sent them on a tour of the city with local guide Stuart Holloway. Welcome to Oxford. Hi. The city has been a centre of academia since 1167, and by the 14th and 15th centuries, the town was dependent on the custom of students who provided a large market for beer. Nothing changes. Oxford has a long history of tension between students and townsfolk, and the Swindlestock Tavern is the site of one of their worst ever clashes. Here we are, right in the heart of the city, where the four roads meet in the centre of Oxford. So off, off to our left, we have the Swindlestock Tavern, where in the winter of 1355, after a dispute between the townspeople and the students, a riot erupted, lasting three days, 63 students were dead. Oh, and this is what we call town versus gown, which is the key event in the history of Oxford, <laughs> as we'll discover when we go inside some of the colleges. Amongst Oxford's 38 colleges, the largest and most famous is Christchurch. Thirteen British Prime Ministers were educated here. Following the riots in 1355, Oxford's colleges were built on the quadrangle principle and New College was the first institution to adopt the style. So let's head down the high into the heart of the university. We'll be going inside New College, the model for all the colleges. So here we are entering New College. Uh, the buildings and the college date from the 14th century. And this was the safe haven where the students were protected from the townspeople. It wasn't just a place where they lived, it was a place where they worshipped. We have the chapel behind us. We have the dining room here in the main quadrangle as well. And we also have where the head of the college has always lived above the gatehouse, the warden's lodgings. So this, this, was, this was everything the students needed, a place to live, a place to worship, a place to eat. At the hub of any university is its library, and unsurprisingly, Oxford's is particularly impressive. One of the oldest in Europe, the Bodleian is the largest university library in the UK, holding over 9 million printed items. So here we are standing outside the main entrance to the Bodleian Library, the main library of the university, and it's entitled to a copy of every single book published in this country. 
and it's been that way since the early 1600s. And these are the buildings that date from when James I was the King of England. Breathtaking architecture is in plentiful supply here, and I'm fairly confident we can find more of it in the surrounding countryside. Time to crack on and find Stuart and Sharon an architectural delight all of their own. We continue our property search in the village of Fringford, which is just over 18 miles north of Oxford. There are pretty thatched cottages here, but no shop. The nearest one is just up the road in Hardwick, which has also got this charming pub. The house I'm showing them is an impressive detached property, which I think might appeal to our buyer's modern taste. So, second property is this one. And straight away, you can see it's obviously a lot younger. That looks That's quite nice. nice, that. Yeah? Yeah. That looks nice. So the house is built, the owners reckon, around the 1980s. But you will see from inside that this is much more contemporary. So what you see at the moment, a bit of off street car parking, you've got your own garage. What do you think? It's really nice. Good. All right. Well, let's get inside and see what you think. OK. This is more their kind of house, and I don't think the interior will disappoint. I'm taking them straight into the hallway. Now, what do you think of this? Before this it was all about lovely. flow. Nice, nice, bright, airy, lovely. Nice. Wow, well, straight really out. Lovely. Very nice. Nice floor. Show us more. Well, I'm glad you said that. Well, this, this is very different reaction than we saw in the first house. It's a different house. Completely <laughs> different, isn't it? Totally. Yeah. Now, the owners have been here around 10 years, and when they moved in here, they gutted the place. They put these oak floorboards in. They've done a very clever extension over here, and they've extended it out and put a pitch roof on and give you this amazing room, haven't they? That's really nice. It's lovely. Lightness. Really nice. Really nice. Nice and light, airy, spacious. Everything we asked for. Everything so we asked for. So, <laughs> so far. Trust me, go with me on this one. I am one. trusting you. Now, listen, the kitchen, you like the kitchen in the first house. This is a different style of kitchen, but it's got a couple of features I think you'll like and you liked in the first house as well. So follow me. So far, so good. I think the open plan layout of the property is working for them. Let's hope the kitchen keeps that momentum going. OK, then. So, very modern kitchen. Ooh. Yeah, I really like it. Do you? Very nice. Why? Why do you like it? It's nice, nice clean lines, big enough to eat in. It's got everything you could ask for in a kitchen. Madam would like this, wouldn't you? I would like this. Yeah. Madam nice. would like this, did you yeah. say? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, uh, you've not been hugely vocal in here, but you just seem to have a different feel, a, a different vibe walking on the south. As soon as you open that door... That's more to take in, it's, not, it's, uh, it's good. But so far, this feels like it's working for you. Am I right or am I wrong? It does work. Yeah, we like. We like. We like. Very matter of fact, we, we like it. We both like. See that? Both. Yes. Both. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> All right, well, listen, let's go and discover the upstairs, shall we? <laughs> yeah? Let's go. Okay. <laughs> You're going to hit me soon, aren't you? Well, they both like this property. So up here on the first floor, this is the master bedroom. <laughs> you look scared. <laughs> I am scared. <laughs> in case I like it too much. Just checking the size. Yeah. Is it big enough? It is. It's plenty big enough. No, what do you this think? This is nice. Nice, plenty of storage space. Yes, which I understand we might need. I'd take about half of your stock. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, come on. You, you said you were worried that you might like it too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. I really do like it. Uh, this is uh, it's getting better by the minute. It is. is it really? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's getting seriously. all right. Is this? Yeah. So what? Uh, is it's there anything? Is there anything missing so far? Nothing's missing. I think it's really, really nice. It's something we were looking for, probably exactly along these lines. Yeah, yeah. worryingly so. Worryingly so. <laughs> so you're both worried about finding something that you like. Well, and because it... we've looked for so long and we haven't uh... found anything, so it's nice to see something you really like. Right. Good. And you look. Quietly impressed by this place. You got it right. We are. Well, I am. You are. I am yeah. quietly Good. impressed. Good. Okay. Well, look. Let's see if we can go and take a peek at the garden. 
and then we'll start talking about price, okay? And yeah. whether or not you can afford it. <laughs> this house just keeps getting better. On this floor, there's a family bathroom, two single bedrooms and another double bedroom. So, low maintenance garden was a task you charged me with. This is just right. Just the right size. OK, well, how impressed are you? Because you've guessed... Well, you guessed pretty much on the money at the first house how much it was on the market for. How much do you think this house is on the market for? I think this one's a bit more than the other one. I think it's probably at the top end of the budget. I think it's about 500,000. OK. Stuart? Well, I was going to go 499, but... You still can, if you like. There's a pound separating you. Yeah, I'll go 499. We'll toss for the pound. Yeah. <laughs> OK. <laughs> this house is on the market for... offers around £475,000. Peter. God, I'm surprised. So what do you think? I think it's good price, good house. Well, why don't you go back into the house and have a good look around upstairs? Mm -hmm. There's three bedrooms, or bedrooms stroke wardrobes, that you could have a look at. <laughs> <laughs> and then, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> and then I'll meet you back outside. But take as much time as you want because it's the last thing you're doing today. Thank you. All right? Wonderful. I'll catch Thanks. you later. Thanks. Yeah, Bye. Great. So, for around £475,000, this modern build has a stylish kitchen diner, a huge open plan living room with floor to ceiling French doors, four bedrooms, and the low maintenance garden they said they were after. I really like this house. It's got a nice feel to it. It's a nice open house. Flows nicely all the way through. Um, plenty of good points about this house. Surprisingly, I thought it was really good and I liked it very much. Um, light, open plan. It's everything that Sharon wants, going out, walking out into the garden, nice uh, flow throughout. Uh, hard to put any faults against it. It was really nice. To sum it up in one word, the house is brilliant. How did you get on? Really well. well really well? Yeah, really it was well. pretty good, that. Pretty good. good. Well, hopefully this has been a good end to the day, has it? It's been a brilliant end to the good. day. Very good. It's promising. As the sun sets over the rolling hills of Oxfordshire, the first day of our property search is over. Recently retired Stuart and Sharon have pressed the last pair of trousers in their successful dry cleaning business. They now want to move away from their home in Buckinghamshire and find a quiet home in the Oxfordshire countryside. We've shown them two properties, one of which they really liked. Nice, bright, airy, lovely. Nice. Well, straight really out. Lovely. But let's see if they fall for the quirky charms of the mystery house. Everything's really surprising from how you see it inside to outside. And I'll be seeing if I can make the grade in Oxford's legendary rowing team. Keep your knees reasonably close together. Like that? Yep. So today we're off to see the Mystery House. And, as ever, it's here to challenge the expectations of our buyers. But really, I still don't know what great reactions to a house look or sound like. Hopefully, I'll find out today. So what do you think the mystery house might be today? I'd like it to be um, barn conversion. That'd barn nice. conversion? Yeah. Wouldn't you like it to be? Patched. Patched? <laughs> we do not want patched. Dark. Okay. Dark. Oh, you don't want thatch, we're not even going in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, apart from a thatched cottage, I think I've pretty much got a free reign for this mystery yeah, house, haven't I? I think we're fairly flexible, really. OK, well, I'm going to hold you to that. For the mystery house, we're taking them to the village of Kingston Bagpews, which is 10 miles south of Oxford. The village has a beautiful 17th century manor house and also a post office, a pub, 
and a tennis court which might appeal to this sporty couple. Stuart and Sharon don't mind a character home, but the absolute essential is a contemporary interior. Our mystery house has an interesting mix of old and new. I just hope that it's not too quirky for them, as it's the perfect lock-up-and-leave property. So welcome to Kingston Bag Pews. The house that's going to help you decide whether to live here or not is this one here. Well, that looks nice. Oh, that's very nice. Now, it's a converted barn. You mentioned you wouldn't mm. mind the idea of a conversion. Mm. It was converted in around the 1960s, but it's thought the property itself dates back to the 1700s. Now, what do you think of this? Look at that view. Lovely, all open fields. Views are nice. What do you think? Can't wait to have a look inside. Good, OK. Now, hopefully... Now, before we get inside, I want to understand one thing from both of you. Can you confirm? If you're quiet, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm quiet, it's good. All right. OK, off we go. Let's go. Well, let's hope Jenny's not too quiet when she sees the inside. In we come. Oh, it's not what I expected inside, actually. Really? Yeah. What were you expecting? I expected it to be a lot darker inside than it actually is. Oh, that bodes well. Mm. Yeah, I did expect it to be a lot, lot darker. What do you think, Stuart? Uh, Different, yeah. Yeah, it is different. So you've got a downstairs loo just behind you there, but I'm going to take you straight into the kitchen. OK? okay. All right. Hopefully this light feeling continues in the oh, kitchen. It, everything's really surprising from how you see it inside to outside. It's really, really surprising. So you were expecting a very dark... Very dark. ...living space. Very sort of really dark oak beams, no lights. Well, this is a nice surprise. Good. And, and the kitchen's much more modern than I thought. Stuart's noticeably quiet. It's Go just, on, what's on your mind, honestly? It doesn't sort of um, inspire me so far. Right, why is that? I don't think it's us, but there we go. We'll, 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 um, we'll go on a bit more. And... I probably like it a bit more than you do. Yeah. I think it's a bit quirky. Let's see what you think of the living room, because one thing it has got is a flow, which I think you liked in the second yeah, property. Yeah, I did, yeah. So let's just take a wander through here and see what you think. Now, I think the living room's a really good size, but what I think is what you think. It is a nice size, yeah. I like how it opens up onto the garden and everything else. Well, that is one thing you said you wanted, isn't it? Yeah. Nice oak floor. Yeah, yeah it is a nice size. They put this in just over, I think, just about two years okay. ago. Now, what do you think of this? I don't think Different. the Zimmer frame's got on. <laughs> no, the Zimmer frame's not going not to go up there. I mean, this is... It's an occasional room. The grandchildren like climbing up there. Yeah. They'd love it. So, Stuart, um, you know, I'm going I'm to prod you on this one. What's wrong with this house? Or what, what aren't you feeling about this house? Uh, it doesn't do much for me at all. None of it. Right. Why is that? Uh, it just doesn't... It's not me at all. I probably like it a lot more than you do. I don't like it at all. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, yeah, barn conversions can evoke a very different response from people. So it, they are for some people and they aren't for many others. Mm. <laughs> you two are perfect examples <laughs> of that. Let's go and take a look at the master bedroom because, well... Because he thinks he's the master. <laughs> Ooh, after you. <laughs> so, opinion seems to be divided. But let's see if I can win them both over with the master bedroom. Now, the master bedroom is on the ground floor. Now... It's quite you... dark, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I don't mind the bedroom being on the ground floor. I just think this is a bit dark for a bedroom. Essentially, this is the biggest room as well. So I think this is actually your master, which is why they've made it en suite. Which you clearly love, don't you, Stuart? I love it. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> it, well, isn't it amazing? You seem to have really liked it up until this point. I did. I liked it really till this yeah. bedroom. But for you, Stuart, it's... I can't get confused about anything in the house so far. Have a think about the price when we go outside. We'll go back through the living room, go to the garden there. OK. Upstairs, there's ample room for two further bedrooms, but I get the feeling the tide has already turned against this house. So this could be your... 
garden. There's another private garden towards the back of the property, but this is obviously south-facing. Fabulous views. It is fabulous views. Best and part love... of the house. It seems, certainly for you, Stuart, the best parts of this house are the external parts, yeah. the, the location, the situation that it's in. So, with that in mind, how much do you think this house is on the market for? Ooh. <sighs> I bet it's quite an expensive village around here. I'll go first. Go on, F it. 5.20. So you think it's over budget? Yeah, I do. I don't. No? No. I think it's less. How much less? I think it's about four, six, five. Do you? Good guess from you. It's on the market for offers around £475,000. Now, for me, maybe only one other property's in the running, but why don't you go back inside the house, have a good look around the other rooms you haven't seen. There's another bedroom upstairs. OK, okay. thank right. you very much. I'll catch you later on. Okay. I'll be here, I think. <laughs> Hopefully the sun will come out. <laughs> this unusual and attractive take on a barn conversion is priced at around £475,000. It has a modern kitchen diner, a reception room with a vaulted ceiling and period beams, three bedrooms and a south-facing garden with stunning views over parkland. Gosh, look at this. This is a pretty interesting, Mr. Sharon. Goodness, right? I don't think we'll be able to climb up there no. all day. I really quite like the house. As I entered the house, um, I thought the hall was quite nice and light, and I quite like the kitchen part of the house as well. I think the only thing I liked in the house was the oak floor and the, uh, the flooring in the kitchen, which was quite nice. And as the more we got on, I thought, definitely not for me. All done. All Are done. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Now, I think we need to find somewhere for you guys to have a bit of a chat and then we'll discuss all that we've seen, shall we? Yeah, okay. Sounds good. Oxford and Cambridge have been competing against each other in an annual boat race since 1829. The event has become an international sporting occasion, which is watched by millions of viewers round the world. In this fiercely competitive arena, you're either a dark blue or a light blue, depending on your university allegiance. I'm here to meet Carl Hudspeth, the president of the Oxford University Boat Club, who's going to take me out on the water and teach me some much-needed rowing skills. Carl, thanks very much for seeing me today. Rowing is a huge sport, mm. isn't it? I mean, it used to be a profession, so... I mean, it started back in the days when they didn't have bridges across the Thames in London, mm -hmm. and you'd hire a, a waterman to take you across the river. And that kind of evolved into a sort of betting sport where, you know, rich gentlemen would sort of, you know, bet against their friends over whose waterman was the fastest. Now, what, what's brought about this amazing rivalry between Oxford and Cambridge and their rowing teams? Um, well, back in 1829, um, a few old school friends, uh, one who went to Oxford, one to Cambridge, decided to have a rowing race. Um, between the eight best men of each university. What would I need to do if I, you know, if I was to try and go out on a boat from this mm. club? I mean, what was the what would the process be? The main thing you'll want to think about today is just keeping your hands level. Um, if you keep your hands apart, then the boat will tip over and you'll fall in the river. What, what, so, what's the first exercise for me now? We'll uh, get in a double and go down on the river. Or down in the river. By the sounds <laughs> of it. Okay, let's go. Yeah, cool. For 182 years, the boat racing crews of Oxford and Cambridge have been battling it out on the water. The famous annual boat race takes place on the River Thames between the bridges of Putney and Chiswick. Traditionally, both crews are known as the Blues, with Cambridge favouring light blue shirts while Oxford has the dark blue. Sean Bowden, the head coach for the Oxford team, is going to be putting me through my paces on the water. Yeah, so Johnny, just a point of technique, that when you start to slide forwards, you yeah. want to keep your knees reasonably close together and let your arms come either side of your knees to let your knees bend. OK, all right. That's it. Like that? Yep. There are around 520 rowing clubs in Britain, with over 55,000 people taking part at least once a week. When the sport was first legitimised in the 19th century, one of the stipulations was that you had to be educated at a university or public school, but that is no longer the case. So, Carl, a lot of people may look upon rowing as almost an elitist sport. Is that an outdated thought, or...? 
Yeah, I'd, I'd say it is. Um, I think rowing's a great sport in terms of the camaraderie that you develop by training in a crew with other people and, you know, working towards a common goal. So with my first run out with the Oxford boys drawing to a close, there's only one thing left to ask. Well, Cole, thank you very, very much for giving me this opportunity, but also for keeping us dry. I felt like I was very much the weak link in this boat. I take it uh, it's going to be a while till I'm selected for the team, is it? Yeah, maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I enjoyed that, and at least I feel like I've earned my dinner tonight. It's now time to catch up with Stuart and Sharon. Now, if you remember, they went a little bit quiet in the second property, but assure me that's because they liked it. Although, after showing them around the mystery house, I'm getting a bit concerned. It all rests, I think, on the second property. Let's find out what they think. So, how have you enjoyed your time looking for Oxfordshire these past couple of days? I think we've shown us some nice houses. Is it the place for you to come and relocate to, most importantly, Stuart? Yeah, I think it is. It's a nice area. We like the area. Um, it's been very enjoyable. So, cast your minds back to yesterday morning, the first property you went to have a look at. From outside, I thought it looked really nice. It just sort of didn't flow nicely for us once we were inside. I think we can write off house number one then, can't we? Just wasn't for you guys. House number two in the afternoon, that seemed to go down very well, didn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. We were really pleased when we saw house number two. Just trying to think, can we live here? Would this be right for us? Because we actually really liked it. Good. Now, the mystery house is always something to challenge you. Of course it is. Stuart, you, would, you never got out of first gear with it, did no, you? Never got out of first gear. Didn't like it at all, I'm afraid. Nothing at all appealed. OK. Well, a mystery house is always a gamble. Yeah. Mm. This time, the gamble didn't pay off. So, as I suspected, it's, it's down to the one property, the second house, then, is it? Yeah, it is. We'd like to go back and look at the second property. You do want to go back to it, do you? Yeah, we will. We will go back and have a look. Sometimes you, you go to a second viewing with your eyes wider open, don't you? Mm -hmm. To look at the practicalities and the realities of living in a new place, don't you? Well, look, I wish you the best of luck. And please, obviously, let us know how you get on. We will indeed. They enjoyed it. Pleasure. Thank you. When you're given a fairly broad remit, it often means that the house hunters themselves don't really know what they're looking for, and they'll only know it once they see the property itself, once they walk through the front door. That property, according to Stuart and Sharon, was property number two. So, obviously, I'm pleased, although it just seems a little ironic, doesn't it, that that was the one house where they were the quietest. So, I think now, for them, a second viewing is essential. If it is their favourite, they need to go back to that house, not only to look around it, to see where they put the furniture, but also to investigate the area. Have a chat with their friends that live locally and see...